Hi, and welcome to this presentation on meshing in ANSYS Workbench Mechanical. In this demonstration, we'll look at surface body and solid body meshing. We'll learn about global meshing controls. We'll see that swept meshing is used where possible. And you'll find out about basic meshing controls. Here we are in the Workbench Mechanical interface. We're going to bring in a static structural system. We're going to go to Geometry and right click and look for our link rod assembly model. This is geometry that we're going to mesh. With the geometry accessed, we can now click on Model and right click and open Workbench Mechanical, in which we'll do our meshing. We'll close this Usage Tips window and wait for the geometry to come in. Here's our link assembly model. When we look at the Geometry tab, notice that there are some blue question marks. And there's one here right at the Geometry branch level. If you click on one of these, you'll see that it's a surface body and has not yet had a thickness applied. That's true for this entire group of bodies. And if I hold the Shift key and then click the bottom one, I can assign a thickness to all of them simultaneously. And I'm going to put in 1.5 millimeters. There it is. Evidently the units I'm employing is millimeters. If I go to the Home tab, over here under Units, you can see that we're working in millimeters. This is the Context tab, and what it mentions will depend on where I click in the Outline tree. So we have our bodies now. We have thicknesses assigned to our geometry. At this point I could do a crude meshing pass. I could go to Mesh, right-click, and generate a mesh. If I look under Statistics, you'll see more than 200,000 nodes. In the ANSYS Academic student version, this is too many nodes for the solver to accept them. So we need to go in and have a look at some of our meshing controls. Note first off, that when we look at these elements, we're seeing the thickness assigned to the shell elements. That's helpful to give us an idea whether the thickness assigned was a reasonable one. We do have a nice quad mesh on these surface bodies, perhaps more nodes and elements than needed. We definitely have a very large number of nodes and elements in these two solid bodies. Let's hide all other bodies. Let's put in a local meshing control so that the node and element count isn't so high. I'll go to Mesh, right-click, and insert a sizing control. It's applied to these two bodies. I need to select at the body level. And let's look at an element size of about 15 millimeters. Hit Enter, and now let's mesh these two bodies. Generate Mesh on Selected Bodies. That's almost too crude a mesh, but it does get a reasonable count. Let's show all bodies. Once we have our mesh, we can start examining the quality of the mesh that has resulted. If I click under Quality, you'll notice in here that I can go to this Mesh Metric entry. So we've clicked on Mesh, gone to its details, down to Quality, opened it up, Mesh Metrics. I can ask for an element quality plot. If I make a bit of room for it, you can see a bar graph here on Element Metrics. Here we have elements that are nice squares. And here we have reasonably well-behaved tetrahedral elements. If I turn off Mesh Metrics, 
I can go to display style and instead of looking at element qualities based on bar graph presentations, I can color my elements according to element quality. And you'll see colors here showing us that many of these elements are well shaped, but there are some tetrahedrons with poor element qualities. Although even at point one, they're good enough to solve in a linear static model. If we wanted better element qualities, we'd need better meshing control in some of these solids, particularly in some of the curved regions. And we might simply go to finer meshing overall in order to achieve that behavior. You'll notice that if we look at meshing and we right click, we can show sweepable bodies. And the bodies that can be swept have been highlighted in green. Let's right click and hide all other bodies. Here are the bodies that could have a mesh swept from one end to the other. And that has in fact happened automatically. If we zoom in, we can see two small rings in here, referred to as thrust spacers. Let's not show that mesh. There are our two thrust spacers. I can go in and I can exert some extra meshing control with these two. Let's insert a face meshing control. I'm choosing faces. I'll choose this ring face and this one. And these I'm going to ask to be meshed in the manner of face meshing. That will try to create nice rows and columns of elements as we work our way around these rings. Internal divisions, I'm going to raise it to two. Watch how these two bodies mesh now. Generate mesh on selected bodies. Click mesh and you'll see much cleaner meshing on those two rings now. Let's show all bodies again and fit the plot in the window. The various surface bodies have a rather fine mesh, but our node count is under 30,000. So we have something solvable here. To actually solve this model would require adjustments to contacts. We look under connections and contacts. You can see some rather bland names given to the contacts that are in there. We can rename them based on definition, giving us an idea what they are. All of these contacts are between solid bodies, and none of them are between surface bodies that have connected to each other. I can go down and ask that when contacts are automatically created, we include face to edge and include edge-to-edge -edge contacts. I can click there and create automatic connections. We have a number of new contact pairs in the model now, which create extra possibilities for picking up the way these surface bodies connect to things. This concludes this demonstration of meshing with a small amount of control added to the process. Thanks for joining me.